Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lukes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. In this video lesson, we will be continuing our discussion of manufacturing cost estimation, and we will be looking at utilities, in particular, steam. Now, in our textbook for Table 8.3 in the $2,001 we have this excerpt here that steam from boilers um, is available at low pressure, medium pressure, or high pressure, and we had pricing information for that. So let's talk just a little bit more detail about this. So the low pressure is typically going to be 30 to 90 PSI, and because we know about steam tables, Depending on the pressure, there will be a saturation temperature that's associated with that, which is going to drive where we have condensation when we use the steam in a steam jacket or some sort of process heater. So we're going to have steam possibly in this low pressure range or as high as maybe 525 to 680 PSI. Now, I it can definitely be made available to use saturated. Frequently, it also can be made superheated, but there's not as much of an energy advantage to that, so saturated seems to be quite common. Uh, large chemical complexes are going to generate a lot of high-pressure steam. So the plant that I used to work in, we would create a lot of steam. And we used part of that within the process, but when we had excess steam, then we used it to generate electricity. So if you're doing that, then you can use it to offset utility costs for your electrical needs to drive your pumps and turbines and so forth. But you also can actually, there are configurations for pumps and compressors that do have steam drives. And if that's an issue, then you're going to need to deal with their efficiency for the compressor or pump, as well as for that steam drive. Now, this table here is looking at kind of a relationship between inlet and outlet pressures for various, the temperature that you would get associated with this. Uh, and how much steam you would need in order to achieve that. You can also get this using energy balances and thermodynamic efficiencies if you desire. So another issue with steam is just like really how is it used? Maybe you never really thought about that. It's like, oh, we're going to add heat. Well, how do you add heat? Frequently, it is going to be steam. It's going to be like a jacket on a reactor, maybe. Or we'll have some sort of steam uh, coils, or we will actually have a real heat exchanger. Generally, the steam comes into this process, and when it leaves, it is liquid. So in the process of heating, or in the step of heating the process fluid, the steam is condensed. So now we have liquid that needs to return to our steam generating system, whether it's a boiler, superheat, or whatever. In this case, if that's all we're doing is we're bringing in steam and we're leaving with condensate, you just need to deal with the steam costs and that's gonna be your total charge for operating this process. We also have some other things like this is a stripper shown here that you can have direct steam injection uh, distillation. There are other times where we're going to bring the steam in to our process and allow it to mix with our process fluid. So when it leaves, it's not just the steam, but it's carrying with it the material that's stripped from this liquid. In that case, we're not going to be returning this steam back to the boiler we're going to have to now treat this as a waste. So therefore, we're going to have the cost of the steam that we're bringing in, but we also have to add in boiler feed water, BFW's boiler feed water. Because that condensate, in this case it may still be leaving as steam, but that 
water that we are bringing in as steam is not going to be returned to the boiler. So I'm gonna to have to keep adding fresh boiler feed water. So if you are using it, mixing it in the process, then you need to do not just the steam cost, but also the makeup water cost. Frequently, you're going to bring water in or sometimes steam in and you're going to leave with, if you brought in water, maybe saturated steam. If you are bringing steam in, you might superheat it, but you're using it in the process. So you're absorbing heat from the process to create steam. In this case, you're probably going to be able to take the steam and use it somewhere else in the process. In that case, it's not a charge to your manufacturing cost, it's a credit, okay? So steam, we've got, you know, to make sure that we're looking at where the steam is being used and is that steam going to be reclaimed to regenerate and make more steam later? What we wanna look at next is, let's look at the cooling water side, so the opposite to this. And we'll be doing that in our next lesson. Thank you very much.